Yo. Hey, welcome to the uh, second edition of this uh, boxing or prospect perspective on this one. In this one, we're doing Nathan Cleverly, a light heavyweight uh, British. He's six foot three and a half, 74 inch reach. The six three and a half is is pretty monster for a light heavyweight. But when you start talking a 74 inch reach, that's not a that's not great for that kind of height. I'm 5'10", and I have a 76 and a half inch reach. I don't know if you can get all of it in there, but, you know, so we have, you know, a little bit different there. He's 23 years old, he's 19 and 0, no draws, and he has 9 knockouts. Now, initially, when you look at this, um, you're going to say, hey, what's up with that? You know, 9 knockouts, not a lot of power, but he's won the last 6 of his fights by knockout. So, he's also, um, in his last six fights, they've all been for some kind of title. And when you start thinking of that, he's stepping up in competition, and he's, he's winning, and he's winning convincingly. So these are all very, very uh, positive outlooks on this. When you look at his overall, um, the fighters that he's fought, you'll see that 11 of the 19 have actually had winning records. And when you combine their whole thing of 435 fights total, 213 by win, 206 losses, and 16 draws, you, you do the math on that, and it's like 49% winning percentage. So, and you take out the draws, and it actually goes up to 51% winning percentage for the fights. So, he's not, you know, you look at that, and you're like, well, that's not really great. Well, Look at his last ten fighters. Don't look at the first nine because they're, you know, you're coming up, you're fighting a lot of bums. But his last ten fighters in 199 fights, they've had 160 wins, 35 losses, and four draws, which comes to an 80% winning percentage. So that's that's a much more positive outlook on it. Last fight, he just won the European title. So let's, you know, with that positive thing, let's go to, you know, the breakdown of the fighter. Now, the one thing you know, he's aggressive, and he's got pretty decent hand speed for a, for a light heavyweight. You know, he's comparable with, I don't want to say he's as fast as Chad Dawson, but when you look at a lot of tape, you can see that he's he's got the hand speed, he's got, got what it takes there. And he won't be a light heavyweight for too long, not a six foot three and a half. I mean, you can easily see him filling into, and he's got a lot of space to grow. Uh, you can easily see him going into a cruiserweight, and possibly even heavyweight when he gets in his later 20s and things like that. He holds his hands low, and he bounces his hands, which means he can get hit. And what I, what I mean by that, when I say bouncing, whenever you see him, his hands are like this. And you see this a lot when he's going through. And that's that's not a good thing because you can be timed. Anytime you have a motion that is the same, you can be timed. And that's not a good thing. When he throws his left jab, his right hand comes out. Whenever he throws a power, that right hand automatically shoots out to the side. And that's good and that's a very bad thing too for being timed. Because whenever he throws the left, the right hand comes down. Okay? It still looks like he has a lot of potential there. That can be tightened up. The movement can be tightened up, things like that. As I said, he's open for the left hooks, the power shots. He has a very nice lead right hand. He'll be in there, and he's sitting here, and he just fires that right hand out as soon as they're going, you know, and it comes out of nowhere. He also has a nice counter right hand. And what he'll do with that is he'll pop the jab, drop back, and then fire the right hand. You see what I'm saying? So he pops, drop, and comes through again. So that's a nice thing to watch whenever you're, you're seeing a lot of his things. He is a nice counter puncher. He has, as I said, he throws with a lot of aggression. He has cumulative power. He hits you with enough shots that eventually they really start taking their toll, and then he gets you out of there. He works the body. He throws combos. Nice one, too. He works the high-low. He'll come up high, pop, pop, come back up top. That's a nice thing. You always like to see that kind of work being done. 
As I said, he throws with aggression. He's good with countering. His D is okay. He's got nice head movement. You'll see him going side to side. So that's something that you want to look for. And he doesn't just go straight back the whole time. When he comes in, he'll step off to the side and use angles and get in, get in and out of the way of shots. So that's, an, that's another thing, too, is that he's actually able to move or he's willing to move. Let's see what else. Uh, when you listen to his corner, they have very nice things to say about him. They're always like, you got to use your jab, you got to work this, you got to do that. I mean, they're very positive and they're, they're actually saying stuff that pertains to the fight so he can actually do stuff. Let's see. Could cause a stir, you know. I think he's definitely got a shot as he steps up, but he's got to cure a couple things. That, the hand movement here, and whenever he throws a jab, the hand comes out. And it flails out or it drops down whenever he loads up any power at all with the left. That's very bad. These are things that need to be taken care of. And if he gets those taken care of, he can go pretty far because he's got a decent chin because his defense isn't that great. He does get hit with good flush, uh, good flush shots. And as he fights the even better opponents, they're going to know this and they're going to throw the lead right hands or they're going to throw the power jabs on him as well. Or hooks, because the second he throws, the second he throws a jab, he can just come in right with the hook, right off the bat, and you're going to be able to land on him because that right hand isn't going to be there. It's not there, and because he holds his left too low, as you're sitting there, you can pop out that lead right hand and catch him on that shot too, because once again his hands are too low, and somebody with a little more speed, maybe a little more knowledge or a good corner, they're actually going to work on that when they fight him, but. As I said, very, very, very solid prospect. I don't even know if you could call him a prospect because he's that high up now, but he's getting there, and he's, he's right on that cusp. They tighten up those two little things. I see him going pretty far. All right, well, hey, this is the uh, prospect perspective. I'm a big ragu. I'm out. Keep punching.